Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. It is League Unlocked. Welcome back, Eric and Mark here with you guys. We get no rest for the wicked. The LCK playoff machine rolls onwards and upwards. The marquee matchup. It only took one round for us to get T1 versus D plus Kia. And you'll notice Mark is wearing the T1 hoodie. And that can only mean good news for the not so long ago slumping t1 in their playoff debut oh man i didn't think that we would get to a point like this maybe with the rest of the year things were going for t1 but yes it is time for the victory t1 hoodie to make another appearance here on league on luck t1 getting it done taking care of business in the series against d plus kia we'll go into just shortly but man oh man does it feel good for a little bit to get some sunshine for me and the rest of the t1 fans so for me, themes in this series, uh, you saw examples again of the jarringly different uh, level of macro and game sense from T1 with Faker in the lineup. He's going zero and three, but they're just pushing it down mid with Rip Herald, getting multiple turrets. And pretty much all four games in this series felt like they were decided it was an even gold state or close to even. It was around Baron. Baron fights going more often than not in the favor of T1. Yeah, it didn't matter whether they were the first ones to the objective or if they were getting there and looking at an already set up D plus Kia and how do we attack, how do we engage? Every single time it was a game breaking moment that would occur around that Baron thing. I don't know whether they had some agreement that they were all gonna meet and make handshakes or kiss at the Baron pit at 20 minutes or whatever it was because they were always there to beat each other. And it always seemed to be T1 getting that upper hand, making that fight and getting the kills that counted to make sure that they could then take full control of the game, close it out was the way things were going. I think the biggest thing for me, as you mentioned, talking about the Faker effect, having him back in the lineup, what it has meant for this team, for these other four members. I'm talking about Kyria, the number one player that I think that this has had to change a big effect for, has unlocked again that play making that engage capability that we all know that he has gotten. You saw that in full effect game one around this Baron time, Baron fights where he is making it just impossible to be someone on the carry on the side of D plus key. And that two to three week stretch without Faker is probably the only time in Kyria's entire career that he's felt invisible like you didn't even see him in a lot of these t1 games yes he's absolutely now going for more of these plays that we're accustomed to seeing from him and uh co corroborating with owner and faker on these engages when it comes to team fighting picking guys off so obviously love to see that other big takeaways from this series is number one the insane stat you can dread it run from it Corky Azir arrives right before the World Championship. And Faker now 17 games in a row he's won on Corky? That's insane. That is actually insane. You got to go back all the way basically until 2000, uh, 20, 2020 to get back to a point where you're finding him losing on this champion. Corky coming through. And yes, Azir been mighty strong in the meta. So we are certainly returning to a little bit of normalcy there. I think that we're still going to see a couple of picks come through and maybe provide a little bit more spice than we are used to with the standard Corky and Azir. We did get to see that Aatrox coming on through that we have talked about in that top side. It is someone not doing their homework and letting through that Aatrox once, maybe twice. Unfortunately, a third and a killer third time for D plus letting that Aatrox through into the hands of Zeus. Yeah, three out of four games Aatrox getting through in its current state, that's that's means for a series loss and you deserve to lose. And listen, I get you go after game three for D plus and I don't think anyone was saying Aatrox was the issue in that third game or why they lost it. So they let it through in that fourth game. I'll tell you what, it was the issue and why you lost the game in the clincher. It's one of those things where sure you could have identified in that third game. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't crazy. It wasn't popping off all these type of things. It's a ticking time bomb. You know that this champion has that ability. You know Zeus is someone that can reach that ability on this champion. We have seen it already. You saw it just a week prior, your warm up, your practice before this playoff. So you knew that this was something that was cooking for, T uh, for T1 and you let it through absolutely deserving of the consequence. 
And when you look at the D plus performance as a whole, I mean, we were hoping, you're always hoping and praying that Canyon is gonna be the guy to carry through a series. I was expecting some spicier picks out of him, played pretty meta across the board. Him and owner were, I don't think either of them had a particularly good series. They were both just kind of, you know, average for their game level. I think if you're Cuz or Peanut looking down on this series, you're pretty excited about what type of opportunities you're gonna have to influence your next matchup, regardless of who you were gonna face. Yeah, I think this one is, is certainly one that we were looking and hoping for Canyon to be that difference maker. I think the only one that I really did see on the side of D plus was Showmaker that kind of stepped up and had any type of shining moments today or one where you're thinking, ah, oh, you know, really wish it turned around a little bit different. This guy was putting out a good effort. That's the only one that I've been able to identify. I think Deft was was there, but there were still too many positioning mistakes that were crucial around these Baron fights, around these key moments where he's just falling far too early. And that is, again, part on him, part on the rest of D plus Kia to talk about and figure out how to avoid. And yes, the playoff run is over for D plus, obviously still around for the gauntlet. They're locked into that five spot, which means... They got a date with their old buddy Barrel in that opening round against DRX. And they're going to have to win not t one, but two best of fives if they want to secure a spot at the World Championship. And current form D+, I don't feel great about them versus any of the other top four squads. Okay, you should beat DRX at least. You should beat DRX. And that is unfortunately something we have said a few times. That barrel this magic, you can never discount it. We have said it a few times this split, and we have said it for against a few teams, and it is DRX finding a way to get that improbable win, so it's certainly not going to count them out of it. I think as you are talking, looking at this current form right now, you look at the side of D plus Kia and you say, sure, more X factors, more star player capability on this team. They have to find a way to get ahead, but you do look at the side of DRX. You see what Barrel has got going on. You can kind of see the sprinklings of, okay, the general is taking over again, making his calls, making his demands, and it's working out a little bit more often for DRX. I think that we are going to get a relatively competitive series to kick things off in that LCK gauntlet. And again, that's not, it's not like you win that and you're in because another early exit for D plus means they also do not have many championship points. So they can't get to that upper bracket uh, when it comes to those regional gauntlets, but still not dead yet for Showmaker and the gang. Obviously you want to see Deft and Showmaker Canyon, all these guys at another international event, but the push rolls on for T1. And we know that KT Rolster got that first seed. They had pick of the litter for who they wanted to match up against in the next round. And they opt in to getting a Telecom War rematch. Best of five. I think a little bit of the strategy here for me from KT is they know that it's a 24-hour turnaround for T1 if they match up against them uh, because they're playing right on the Thursday again. But still, I'm a little surprised they picked T1. A little bit surprised, absolutely. But there are certainly lots of avenues that you can talk about and realize why this is the choice that you are taking if you are KT and, and you know the choice that you have earned yourself by being in this position that you had been throughout the summer split. Pretty spicy. This is going to be the best Telecom Wars absolutely that we have had in years, guys. Buckle up, KT fans, T1 fans. I know it's been all over the place with the Telecom Wars the last couple of years. This one is your certified giga banger. It's got consequences. It's got stakes. It's got power in these playoffs. I cannot wait for us to dive into this one. So you remember they played only a short week or two ago. Baker was not in the lineup. It was an absolute stomp in the favor of KT. They won that matchup earlier in the split as well when Faker was playing. I think they were, it was back in week three. They were both four and one or something. So KT, 2-0 in the regular season, head to head. Obviously a historic regular season. All five members on that first team all pro. They got MVP, which means everything is pointing towards KT Rolster, which really has me worried. It really has to be worried. <laughs> as long as you're not excited, everything's no, no. going to be I'm worried. You can be, that... you can be excited about the matchup that we're going to have. But as long as you're not excited in that KT camp, things are going to be okay. You're not activating any curses. What we do have is we're looking at these players and what type of matchups we're going to get. You talked, We talked about Canyon a little bit and how owner was not, both of them, not really impressing in this series today. 
you're gonna have to impress against cuz because he has been on point all split long he has been a mega part of what is going right for this kt team you better believe he is gonna have the pace he is gonna have the pathing to make it havoc for this t1 team the other thing to look at of course is that a trucks pick that we talked about for zeus in that top side that's now going to be contested looking at the side of keen he is certainly someone that we know can play and can dish out the damage on that a trucks i expect that one to be uh, something to be looked at and as well that bottom lane aiming and lahens how they've stepped up their mojo together is a big time key to the damage for kt rolster can they handle kiria and gumiyushi 2v2 1v2 whatever it is now that we are seeing this kt1 bottom lane start to hit that stride again given that Faker's back in the lineup. Not only is that Aatrox pick gonna be contested, but I imagine Kane of all top laners is a guy spamming some mad science in solo queue to have a counter pick ready for that Aatrox. Ooh, I'd love to see something like that come through. I haven't, I don't think we're quite there in the patch right now. I think Camille is one of those champions that I wanna keep my eye on that can challenge and rise up to be at the same type of broken level that Aatrox is going to be at right now and for the foreseeable future at this time. That will be one of the matchups that I think is going to decide a lot of, the, of how things are going to shape up and what type of decision making is going to have to happen in these late mid to late games for these both of these teams in this match. It's it feels like the first time in this this era of T1 with this roster where you look at individual matchups head to head across the board. And they're at a disadvantage in every single lane with what KT just did this split. I think it's going to have to be one of those times where, and this is very rare for looking at this T1 lineup. And of course, the evaluation of this T1 lineup has changed compared to the past and everything else, given what we have gone through recently. But man, you are absolutely right. You are looking at this one. This has got to be one of those first times that you can't look at all these individual edges for T1. You got to find the group edge you got to put it all together you got to say hey we got the faker global taunt we got curious engages we got this going on that going on to find your edge because that's how good this kt rolster squad has been so far this summer and listen t1 no strangers to a little bit of team fight magic greater than the sum of their parts that we've seen over the last two years with this squad kt picks up t1 which means other side of the bracket we got a wonderful storyline in itself hanwa life Gen G in that 2-3 seed matchup. And obviously the headliner here is the semi-final mid lane rematch. Zeka versus Chovy, both in pretty damn fine form coming into this one. Both in great form coming into this series. Both got the champion pools that are going to be all over the place with this series heading through. This is one of the ones, and this is kind of actually the real reason that you can understand KT going for T1 in this type of situation, avoiding Hanwha life is part of that equation that you have to factor in, given the form, given the rise in form that we have seen from Hanwha life over the last two weeks in specific. Yes, Zeka, big part of that. I think Kingen getting a little bit more involved, but of course the consistent that has been there and it is rising to an even better level. And one of these ones that we're gonna have to keep in check and we're gonna have a great matchup on the other side as well, Viper down in that bottom lane for Hanwha Life. He is that damage engine that keeps it all rolling and keeps it alive for Hanwha Life. On the other side is going to be the Giga Rookie himself, Mr. Pays in the bottom lane for yeah. Genji. Just looking to make more magic and more of a hysteric, unreachable feat for first year as a pro player. Uh, but, you know, Genji, of course, won the regular season head-to-head. -head. There was some close back and forth. I mean, they only dropped two series all the regular season, did Genji. That last week against the bros that Genji lost, we're not chalking that up to anything really serious, right? I don't think so. I think that one's just kind of a little blip on the radar, one of these type of things. Again, you can look at how things were going and what type of position KT and Genji both were in. Things were locked up. You can look at that as, as the way to uh, analyze or try to stomach that type of loss in that situation. I think the big one as well for me is going to be looking at this series. And we know what has been one of the differences and why Hanwha Life has been able to climb up this way is the G-Riz factor. Mr. Grizzly in the jungle and what he has done. He has been certainly impactful going up against now the veteran, Mr. Peanut on the side of Gen G. Going to be very interested to see what Peanut has in store for, for Grizzly in this playoff series. 
I feel like we're due for every, every few weeks, it feels like people sleep on Gen G, disrespect what they've done over the first year. I feel like I feel like this is a wake up call where they just 3 0 Hanwa and you say, you know, we've won the last two LCK splits, guys. Where's the respect? It could go that way. And one of the ways that it can happen like that is if Doran says, hey, I don't like all this conversation about if Kingen's going to show up or not, because I've always shown up. This year is the way that Doran should be checking in for Gen G. Gonna be very spicy to see this matchup go down. I don't know if there's an Aatrox angle for Doran, but that angle might be banned at all games. So that, that's a strategy too. I don't think Doran needs to care about the Aatrox. You've been watching the Giga Shy? You've been watching this Orn that's doing more damage than everybody else right now? I think Doran's got his options all fine and locked up. He's looking pretty good on the Rumble lately too. So I see a Renekton Rumble type of angle for Doran. He doesn't need to be even sweating about that Aatrox, but marquee matchups in both of these uh, round three action or round two action in the LCK. And of course, again, they got a little bit of an extra life. Whoever loses is going down to that loser's bracket. From one loser's bracket to another, as we're looking at the LCS, the dream runs continue for the man who does not miss worlds. In Mr. Jensen matching up against Golden Guardians, who are going to be looking for an angry rebrand, rebound after losing to NRG. And this this is a tough angle. If Dig somehow manages to win this series, then I'm buying in on the hype. <laughs> I'm right there with you because if they're able to get this one done, uh, we have certainly been wrong about Dig is the way to go seeing this one. Mr. I don't miss worlds, Jensen. Yeah, you took care of business in that first matchup. It's going to be a little bit different loading in against these Golden Guardians and it's Dory in that midland. Steep curve, they're going up. Very much so, and I feel like that challenge is absolutely going to be there, going to be in your face when you know these Golden Guardians have had this knock down. They know that this is also the Golden Guardians, that it's not the old meek and, and loser-style Golden Guardians. This was the Giga Chat Golden Guardians. They've been to MSI. They know that they've got the talent, and they can bet on themselves, and they know they are better than being down in the lower bracket type of situation. So you best believe that they're going to be storming out of the gates with their most aggressive stuff. And I think that's a team you'd be more confident representing internationally than Dignitas. No offense. I love seeing Rich play some fun stuff. Love seeing Jensen. But Golden Guardians have proven themselves time and time again this year. The other matchup in that loser's bracket is the super compelling one to me because a couple of weeks ago, both Evil Geniuses and Team Liquid were teams we were talking about we'd love to see at Worlds representing the LCS. And now, at best, only one of these are getting through. Oh, baby, it gets time. At this time of year, you get these tough decisions, tough choices. And this is one of them right here for the LCS fans. Who you back at? Evil Geniuses, JoJo Pyun, that NA squad, unforgiven down at the bottom lane. Or are you supporting Team Liquid? Are you supporting this new dream? Mr. Captain America himself, Core JJ, bringing over World Championship Piosik, sliding in North American mid laner APA. Who are you siding with Evil Geniuses versus Team Liquid? This is going to be a good brawl, I think, down here. And I think brawl is the way to put it because we're going to see some punches thrown back and forth. Team Liquid, I think. The ceiling's higher. We've When they're playing at their very best, I think they are the better team, but the inconsistencies they've been marred with throughout the entire summer split continue to be true. One thing I'm hoping for sure, shaden has got to be starting game one in this series, right? I don't know how you can make that type of mistake if you are these evil geniuses and you got to put your best foot forward. That best foot forward is Shaden starting for your team and getting it done in these playoffs. Again, that was one of those things where I thought was almost impossible to see happen. But we did see happen right away in the Cloud9 series that it was our Mayo. I didn't think we'd be making that change. Don't want to see that one going through. Need to be rolling through with that strongest lineup possible. Their best game against Cloud9 was far and away game three when Shaden started. And of course, they had a big lead. They ended up throwing it. But I imagine they at least pick up a win in that series if Shaden is starting from the get-go. So yes, absolutely hope that he's starting opposite Piosik and the rest of Team Liquid. The top side of this bracket now 
you got the surprise NRG run against Cloud9. Obviously, both of these squads have already booked a ticket to the World Championship. They're playing for a finals berth at the Prudential Center in New Jersey. And I think the spirit, the soul of CLG is living on. And there's a lot of people rooting for this NRG squad. There's a lot of domestic talent on it with, listen, Palafox, APA, and JoJo Pion, all these domestic mid laners taking over this LCS bracket. Ooh, love to see me. Some NA talent coming on through. Can't be forgetting about your boy, Mr. Big Dokes up in the top side. Oh. Come on. You got, you got extra orders of NA on the NRG team. And yes, they are rolling up against Cloud9. And correct me if I'm wrong, I think if you look at the earlier parts of the year, Yes, NRG still struggling, still kind of floundering and figuring their spots out. But one thing that was consistent was they were able to challenge Cloud9. Every single time that they matched up against them, they were hard fought games. And some of them were the ones that NRG was pulling off the upset and getting that victory against Cloud9. That's what you got to be banking on if you are NRG into this matchup. Because yes, even with all the positivity, all the excitement about what you've already accomplished in these playoffs, what it means that you are going to be going to an international tournament, all these things, you still got to focus up and take your business to the next level, knowing that you are against Cloud9 for this best of series. Dokla has been steeply leveling up over the last month or so for NRG and that's probably the biggest advantage I give over to NRG is that top lane matchup. The big question mark is can FBI and Ignar hold their own against Berserker and Zven and specifically Berserker because we know he's the guy on this Cloud9 squad as soon as 20 minutes rolls around or he's got two or three items on any AD carry he is the X factor for Cloud9 so can can FBI at least match that power level throughout this series? There's got to be some way to find a way to be at that type of level and knowing that FBI is a player that has reached very high highs here in the LCS before. So certainly not out of the question to see him level up, focus in and channel that energy to get through into that next level. It's going to be about surviving and getting through at a regular pace and not being too far behind type of thing because if this is able to be Berserker and Sven off to the races, picking up that power. By the time you get to these mid and late game fights, I don't care what's going on for the rest of this energy squad, which is your best bet in those mid to late fights. Having the rest of the squad, having Dokla be big dopes, having Palafox making these dipsy doopsy type of plays, picking somebody off on a mage or whatever. That is your best bet if you are energy. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is if Berserker is not crazy online and powerful in these later fights. And, you know, I already mentioned Dokla, but going a step further, Palo Faker has maybe been the best performing mid laner so far in the playoffs. So solo lanes, edge NRG for me. I think Palafox quietly has gone about the last half of this summer split to be the best mid laner that we have seen in North America this last half of the split. The way that he has been consistently powering up, consistently being this big threat for NRG and one of the key members making these important plays and decisions. Absolutely leveling up, my man. And I think the other thing to mention with Mr. Palafox is your jungler, Mr. L Contraxo in the jungle. What a journey, what a ride for him. What a great example of how non-linear something like success and progression can be thankful that he stuck with it and sees this type of success. I think that he can have quite a big role and quite another good matchup against his friend, Mr. Blabber on the side for Cloud9. Get a good night's sleep, T1 and T1 fans, because you're right back on the rift for losers bracket. We'll be back to break it all down. But that is it today for League Unlock. Erica Mark here with you beautiful people. Thanks for watching. We will catch you on that flippity flip.